tie in that v1 f3 just finding that nice value and playing the end game perfectly now we're gonna get a replay out about as you walking through everyone normally we see him on the wu chen for teams now he's been moved over to that viper and you're seeing his impact you're seeing that pressure coming out from him now moving over to mine asc's jang dong putting on the pressure onto drg accurate slashes coming out causing so much problems for drg takeda doing his best to slow down these slashes but jang dong will not be denied one charge is coming out it's nice stack up and able to close out drg with that white tiger both now over inside the rum we saw the clutch up from cgs being able to kite perfectly while gg peeled for them now alliance showing their dominance in this end game first to all first to lose alliance challenges that idea they run the first all but they use no other alts after that and they just play it perfectly picking off the chaos and maintaining their dominance now it's the first game will it be critical as they move forward well, we can have a look backwards. This is how things started out. Alliance's NY7 on that side before we can see ASC looking for that third party onto Wolves ZK out towards Skygaze. This was the absolute insane fight. His WBG finding the double grab. Walker is one of the best, if not the best TN highs in the entirety of NBPL. And you can see Unfortunately, he's not able to secure both kills off of it because Hardy still has the combo breaker cube set up to get both himself and his zip away and disengage to safety as Bowden out, finding the chase down to win that realm of Yang OUG's SS with the charged RMB on that hang sword into the jump horizontal follow-ups getting so much damage onto these players even in the middle of that Karumi ultimate they're still able to make the damage stick as here you can see the flame is coming on Kakaishi, just trying to hit that fire proc onto as many players as he possibly can this is the moment that he's able to outlive absolutely everybody with that Matari the positioning away from everybody there's flame to zone them away to make sure that they do not get to pressure him out early as well as no surprises it is going to be yiran on up. oh wow just massive massive plays coming out from vvv we're seeing him on this f2 data but this was he just absolutely cuts through bowda right here i believe i wish Runs we had a face cam on bowda like when they realized that it's takeda f2 <laughs> And normally the VVV sheer is element on the, of surprise. And normally VVV is on the quiet side, but we're seeing my man locked in. He's super, super high, but leading the charge on the position one on the Takeda. And we saw this is what we were talking about the Congo line of teams just third partying nonstop here. This, this fight moves over to the ballista, but you just see a JL just thriving in all the chaos, finding more and more kills. Now this the beginning of the end moxie a little bit of a, a, a mistake right here we we we, we I, I cast her curse they all a little bit here they they were on their way to the thanos stab and then my man just gets carried into zone yeah let's just just cut the vt you know we can we can fill in the blanks jail kill everybody they get the final snap they get the lost kill multiply it's this bit it's it's this bit <laughs> When VVV gets hit into by that Kylan, and to add salt in the wounds, it's not even OUG's Kylan, because OUG are on the Siphon composition. It's FP a lot of these teams, but we can also have a look at how these wins played on out. This is JL with that White Tigers. This, I believe, is them turning on to poor FPX with that Takeda Ultimate, and there's FPX returning the favor with the Kylan V2 dashes. You can see that one thing is doing his absolute utmost to try and keep his Takeda alive goes for the full Tether and ever. The current point system for Kill is so heavily weighted allows these teams to keep things close and exciting all the way to the end. ASC having a monster off spawn with their Cyber the slaps. Moxie optimal going left and right getting gold cutting through blues perfectly.
Ice Perry out from the King. I remember this going back and forth. The King brings it back for them, but then ASC brings it back as well. Xin Yu is going to get double teamed by both of them. Now going into the realm of Yang. How does you with the juggles? It's going to be popping that, that Kylan alt as well. They're zipping under a ton of pressure. You're going to be looking before that PO looking for the secu secure on the kill able to find it and now on the outside OUG's the king keeping a ton of pressure onto ASC getting that double charge with the staff keeping their zipping out of the center they turn their attention to the Temi stuck inside the ultimate now going to this end game you see how does you keeping his health as high as possible then he's gonna pop his ultimate get multiple single slashes before finally his immortality is gonna pop but it's not gonna matter because he's gonna be able to get those last hits off and pick up a ton of kills for his team it's it's not the karimi <laughs> it's not the karimi it's the hit points so it's even more impressive that OUG Jin Yu was able to hold on to the V2 as long as he did. Because if he had to pop that V2 from coming under pressure from anything else, like any other team in that area before the zone traps and we went to heal off, OUG don't find the kills. OUG don't find the placement points. OUG don't qualify the match point. Now, looking at the highlights brought to you by Born Sword Gaming, GG. Every time you get to see their POV, you hear their comments, you hear how hyped they are, you hear how locked in they are. Looking at three three zeros, POV, one of the goat monks on the Kurumi, finding this endgame, having the staff knocking the Kylan into zone, switching over, keeping his team healthy at max health to guarantee this 1.2 multiplier. Nice okay, job okay. from this team to close this out. Super strong fundamentals, winning the heal off perfectly, and securing with that massive game. Having that 1.2 multiplier makes all the G. But moving forward, we are going to be taking a look at the highlights brought to you by Born for You Gaming. Moxie, take it away. OUG coming on through, just dispatching GG. This was one of those moments where GG lost a lot of that momentum. FPX also able to find some lovely parries on to X1 gets that crackle bump extension into the charged RMB on the long sword and then does it again. Back to back before swapping over to the slap. Optimal gaming to set up the stagger. Here's the moment that OUG were able to win their first run of Yang onto, or rather were able to find the first kill uh, with that Zai V2 onto one of the plays from Wolves. Gets that Kurumi Tava to fully reset before backing it off and swapping over to the pistol. x one DDI with that Viper setting up for all of the crowd control, but here's KLA's POV. They know exactly what's about to go down. They've spotted out the Vipers. They know that the testers are in play and they're making sure that that Hardy Cube is set up. That disengagement is booked and that Kylan V2 is ready to go to win the heal off. And it is deservedly so that we everybody, because like that final zone, it was on a cliff side. But for the sand sites and compositions, there was a fence that was dividing it. And it either collapsed onto the cliff side, which would have benefited the Kylan composition, or it collapsed onto the other side where it was into the flat space and the tents, which hemmed everybody in and set up for the Takeda sand siphon compositions to have that very narrow hallway where all of those players weren't able to avoid the Furin shelves coming through. That's why Yu was able to put up as much damage as he did when the storm eventually closed on through, as we can have a look and see how exactly Bowder got the overall MVP from start to finish this team was on absolute fire. And remember I was saying, Moxie, the two rounds that you want to have a good round is the first round for some form, for some momentum and the last round when it actually matters. And when everything matters in the end, you happens to find all the kids, has a presence of mind to play the heal off situation.